you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's this, 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 this enough so you can know what's up in the hood. And I'm Jackie Castro, and you're watching Hardcover News. Today, our special report will address teen depression. And we will talk to mental health professionals about this life and death issue that too often goes overlooked. Now, we're going straight to the streets with our reporter, Brandon Quintrell, to talk to people about this important matter. Do you guys think um, teen depression is a big deal in America? Um, well, I think it's probably a big deal everywhere. I, I would say, yeah, I think anywhere in the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. North America, why so? I guess um, you guys, well, not you guys, but just teenagers, it's hard to be around people and just peer pressure and, and, and different factors like that can play with somebody's self-esteem. Yeah. I do, and I also think that a lot of, a lot of it is overseen. So mm -hmm. a lot of people don't notice that teens are under depression. Yeah. And so I do think it's a big deal. Now that we got the public's opinion, we will go to Dr. Helen Morrison, a child psychiatrist, who will analyze some statistics and discuss some of depression's root causes. Brenda recently sat down with her in the hardcover studio. One in 12 adolescents ages 12 and 17, or 8.5% go through a major depression episode once a year. How do you feel about that? I think that's a low figure. Mm. Uh, I think there are many more episodes of depression in adolescents of, of that age group. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, researchers never get true answers mm -hmm. because many people don't want to admit that they've gone through or are going through mm -hmm. a major depression. Wow, and to think if those numbers were even as high as Dr. Morrison suspected. We will go back to the people and explain what depression is. Then, Dr. Hunter will provide us with a medical definition. If they have a condition where they are apathetic, lethargic, you know, they don't want to do certain things like mm -hmm. we talked about before, you know, so I think that would qualify for being depressed. Yeah. And what about you? Yeah, I guess the sadness that is um, interfering with everyday life, so they're not able to cope with everyday life, so that's what I would think teen depression is. I would say depression is something that impedes the daily activities of a teenager. Um, to the point where they don't have motivation for anything. I, I guess it's like going from being like a, a regular happy kid who like enjoys, you know, like maybe like spending time with their friends, family, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. to not really expressing any interest in really anything and sort of becoming reclusive. Well, depression at its basic level is a biological disorder, meaning that something is different in how the chemicals in the brain that serve to help us regulate our emotions, um, they're not as available or they're not um, staying in the system as long as they might typically. And so you find that that leads to a vulnerability to be more sad, um, to be bothered by things that might not, when you're feeling happy, get in the way. Thank you, Dr. Hunter, for the scientific explanation. Brenda will sit down with Dr. Laura Foster to talk about how depression affects the adolescent's learning. Adolescents who are suffering from depression typically have a hard time concentrating, focusing, making decisions. So when you put someone in a school setting and they're having those difficulties, it makes it very hard for them to learn, to retain information, and to perform in school. Um, so what sorts of treatment are there available for depression? For depression, uh, cognitive therapy and medication are the most common. The major goal is to, to challenge the negative thinking. Mm -hmm. When someone's depressed, they view most everything through a negative lens. That depressed individual might feel hopeless, like mm -hmm. there's nothing I can do to help these, these bad grades or I don't have any friends. And you need to challenge that. You say, well, you do have some friends. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, um, you know, you do have some control over your life. You're not helpless. It's not hopeless. Mm -hmm. And you can find evidence in most people's lives of, of things that are going well. Yeah. And you want to build on those positive things in their lives. 
Thank you, Dr. Monroe. Thank you for watching this special report on hardcover news. I hope you gain a lot of valuable knowledge from this important issue. If you recognize any of the symptoms of depression, please call National Alliance on Mental Illness of Greater Chicago. The number is 312-563-0445. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. <laughs> See my feet. Hello, I'm Peyton Harris. And I'm Jackie Castro. And you're watching Hardcover News. Ah, shit. Maybe we should see it. Nice. Life and death issues that too often go over the. Oh my god. Why are you mad? Yeah, Thank you for watching. <laughs> Special report today is about the hidden truth of teenage depression. Hello, I'm Peyton here. As a and now we're heading straight to the streets with Bro over there. Oh, oh. I'm Peyton Harris. Have a great day. What's up, everyone? I'm Anthony Lopez, and this is Corey Wright. We're here to let the people know about this whole anxiety thing. You feel? Yeah, we're just here to keep it real for the people. Yeah. Well. Let's let the people know what's up with this anxiety thing, yeah? Yeah. Well, anxiety is the worriness, uneasiness, or nervousness brought about by the wonder or despair of what's to come with future events. Yeah, and anxiety alone in America affects one in every five teens, which is approximately 21.4% of all of them. This ranges from ages 13 to 18. Wow. Say, do you maybe have an idea of, like, where this anxiety is coming from, maybe, in teens? Yeah, well, my friends, it probably comes from the responsibilities that the high schoolers face when they're going to prepare for the real world, going to college, selecting which colleges to go to, extracurriculars, placement tests, or even work, which can stress a teen's mind. Mm. Sounds about right. Say, quick question. Yeah? What do you see yourself doing five years after you graduate high school? Uh, do you even know what college you're going to? Uh, do you even know if you're going to college? Yeah. Do you got everything together? Easy, easy, fam. But can you think what is going through the minds of those high schoolers as they prepare for the real world? Hmm. I wonder. Let's find out, shall we? Yeah. Lucy, what you got for us? Do you have any plans for what you're going to do after you graduate high school? Uh, well, hopefully, um, once I graduate, I hope that I'm packing and getting ready to go to the university of my dream, whether it be Dominican or Madi Wisconsin-Madison. Has anyone or anything helped you to uh, achieve, to set those goals for yourself? Any advice or encouragement? Um, yeah, my teachers and my counselor and my B coordinators are both are all three um, people that push forward and challenge me to do um, greater things and help me meet my goals that I want. Uh, would you say that you are going through stress or anxiety now in your life, planning for <clears throat> your future? Um, yeah, I think that um, physically I have a lot of headaches and also um, academically I'm either tardy or absent and that really brings my grades down and makes me um, go back a little. Uh, has this stress or anxiety affect your social and or academic life? Yeah, um, whenever I um, forget to do assignment or um, stay back at home to finish an assignment, there's always 
a pile of work that I have to get done coming back to school and I guess my grades drop and um, it's like a, a balance that I have to manage to keep balanced and I guess sometimes I can't have time for myself or go out with my family or friends. Well, it's clear to see through the life of this team that planning for after high school can be a factor of the stress and anxiety in a teen's life. How about we talk about some of the symptoms they can go through? Sure. Well, some of the physical symptoms are as follows. Stomach aches, sweating, frequent urination, fatigue, insomnia, headache, dizziness, change in appetite, and diarrhea. And some of the mental effects are as follows. Feeling of impeding doom, panic or nervousness, especially in social settings, difficulty concentrating, irrational anger, and restlessness. This is a lot more serious than I thought. I wonder how those fresh out of high school feel. College kids? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see what they had to say to you about their experiences of stress and anxiety. While you were in high school, did you go through any stress or anxiety? Yes, I felt some stress from my teachers, stressing me to apply to colleges, multiple ones by a, a certain date. Now, maybe senior year, was the anxiety was more completing college applications, getting them in on time, and scholarships so you don't have to pay for college. <laughs> Did the plans you have for yourself while you were in high school, the plans you're fulfilling now? Yes. What were your plans? My plan was to take a year off of school, go to work, stack some money, and then go to college. For the most part, I just went from pre-med to pre-nursing, so it was still in the medical field, but it stayed the same. Uh, are you going through any stress or anxiety now? Um, a little bit, because I only have two years to get my stuff together and apply for nursing school. Rather than medical school, you have four years, and then you go into med school, so a little. Um, what are some advice you could give to some high school students stressing about where they're going to go after they graduate? Um, make sure you stay up with your counselor, stay up on the due dates, um, apply for FAFSA as fast as you can, and just make sure you stay on top of your schoolwork. The main thing, really, your first two years of college is gen ed, so you have time to decide if you really don't know. But if you really do know, I recommend going right into that field rather than waiting for those two years. Well, maybe the advice that these high school graduates had to say or the comforting thought that other teens are going through the same uh, stress and anxiety isn't much help to you, but some websites that can help you are scholarships.com and colleges.niche.com. And that's just to help reduce the stress and anxiety of the thought of whether you'll be able to go to college or not. And also, if, if you feel like those sources aren't working, maybe one thing you can, or some things you can try on your own are practicing exercises that will calm your mind. Things like meditation, drinking tea, solving puzzles, or even just talking to one that you feel close to and feel comfortable sharing your thoughts with. And it could be really impactful to those who have stress. Uh, so that's all we have for now. Thank you for watching. And Miss outside. Are you affected by everything that's been happening? Are you overwhelmed? During this time when there's so much focus on our physical health, it's important not to forget about our mental health. With all the changes happening as we overcome this pandemic, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, anxious, and stressed.
living in some place like Chicago where we are in the Midwest and we have uh, all four seasons, right, all year round. Um, what happens when we experience what's, you know, the less light um, within our environment during the season changes? Um, typically, uh, the sun gives us, you know, all this beautiful energy and a lot of us feel joyful when we, um, when we get sun. And so when we experience those time changes and transition and, and we don't have as much sun uh, and sunlight out, uh, that can change our mood and sometimes um, make us feel more tired, right? We, it's darker um, at an earlier time. So sometimes folks might have more fatigue, right? Because our body and our minds are more stable. So basically, being stuck inside affects us. That's obvious. But not being able to see nature, it's another thing. Communicating with other human beings, traveling, exploring, trying new things. As a human being, it's instilled in us to have that instinct to explore. I don't know, it just made me a really weird person. I sleep for hours on end. I procrastinate a lot now. Also, also very, very fun thing to know. Has your household, like during quarantine, had any effect on your mental health? Yeah. Like the people in my household? Oh yeah, they all suck. They're like really mean people. So the best thing to do during this time is to make the best out of it. Just find things to do where you are. Try to reach out to people you know. Maybe even get creative, raise your creative talent. Don't let the quarantine get the best of you. When you're depressed, where do you want to go? Nowhere. Depression is a serious medical condition that can take so much out of you. You try to put on a brave face, but inside the symptoms rise. There's a lot of information about depression out there, and not all of it may be accurate. Let's find out more from the people who can share a first-hand account of what it's like to have depression. Common misconception about depression is that we're never happy, when in reality it's like, you can be happy with depression. Whenever I try to tell someone about my depression, they always go, but your, your life is so good, there's nothing wrong. Um, and I always have to explain to them that it's a chemical imbalance. People think it's just an emotion, like you're just being dramatic, but in reality, that's not the case. One misconception about people with depression that they want to kill themselves, which is, is, an, is entirely untrue and mostly false. Not every depressed person wants to kill themselves. I had both medical treatment, as in pills, and uh, informal treatment, as in I talked to friends. Um, a lot of the time, time uh, friends with depression as well, because it they understood how I felt. The way I dealt with depression was, I basically looked out to my friends and they, cho they helped me. I've seen other people deal with depression by getting treatment. Um, I personally have been through treatment since I was about 14. I know another way that some people get treatment is just finding a hobby. Um, I, I've seen other people deal with depression almost the same way, but sadly some people deal with depression in more hurtful ways. Some people hurt themselves to deal with it. I've seen other people deal with it in negative ways, such as self-harm. However, due to my friends helping me, I've become more empathetic and I've tried helping them the same way they helped me. How I've seen others, others deal with depression, they went to go seek help. They went to mostly get help from their friends, which that's on their basis, but I don't recommend people to, uh, to get help from their friends. 
I think they should go straight to the medical source. The method of treatment that I find most effective, um, and really the only one that I can say is therapy. Um, as I said before, I've been in therapy for, we won't do math, <laughs> since I was 13. And that has been the most effective form of treatment for me. The most effective way to, of dealing with depression to me is just to talk it out with someone. Some people just need someone to listen to. It helps a lot. Um, but in my opinion, the best way to deal with depression is getting medical help. Pills didn't help me, but they might help you.